Okay, so good evening everyone. Welcome to today's class. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Sarasi, a PhD student uh, from Dr. Shet's lab. So today Saida asked me to talk about uh, Dibipedia. Uh, so there are a couple of slides even in her slide wiki that uh, you guys can have a look. But uh, this one was a little more up to date than uh, that slide set, so that's why I haven't used that. I'll upload uh, this data. So, Wikipedia is a data set, and this data is being extracted from Wikipedia, so that's the whole thing we're going to talk about today. So, recently there is a very huge uh, interest in these crowdsourced knowledge sources because uh, they have a wider coverage, covering number of topical areas. So, Wikipedia is one of uh, those crowdsourced data sources. I'm sure when we want to search something, probably one of the few sites that we would like to go is Wikipedia, because we know that into a certain extent they are reliable information and it has a wider coverage on most of the topics that we would like to uh, search. And at the same time, even if you look at Google, Google will try to give Wikipedia in one of their top 10 results. And so this is to give an example how up to date uh, this Wikipedia is. So. This, uh, this happened, uh, this was during the London uh, bombing during 2005. So they said that the first Wikipedia entry appeared in just 18 minutes after the incident happened. And then around more than 2,000 users provided a 40 page long article just within 12 hours. So that, that's, that's to give an idea of how, how important uh, the up to date knowledge can be there in data sources such as Wikipedia. So currently, they have around even more than 4.7 million now actually when you look at the very up-to-date results. And uh, they have few errors because most of the time community go and try to edit them. And also they look for very authoritative sources and most of the people in Noises, we know how hard for us to create a page about Noises because we didn't have authoritative sources to provide uh, validity about the organization. So you cannot just simply go and create a page. They will look uh, the credentials of you, credential of the sources that you have provided, credentials of the references that you have. So that's why they think this as a high quality crowdsource knowledge source. So you have been learning about semantic web for a long time now. So what is semantic web? I'm, I'm, I'm expecting an answer from the audience. You don't need to tell good things about semantic web. I ask, what is semantic web? No, no, I think it's capturing video, so you'd better to say good thing about semantic web. No, I don't think it is necessary. <laughs> we are researchers. We are here to criticize. Yeah, what is what is semantic web? Good question. Mm. So we need to add those students, Iran students, on. Accurate answer. What Iran is? How do we again? Yeah. It just came through semantic web. <laughs> <laughs> There's a connection between semantic web and Iranian students probably. I don't know, I don't have them in my... No, 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 it's just like that. Okay, so what is semantic web? Especially what is semantic web? The process of making the whole web to act in a more intelligent way. Mm -hmm. 
Can we say if it's an extension um, of the web through W3C? Yeah, so uh, yeah, it is an extension to the web to create structured, structured data on the web. Yeah. So people can uh, easily process the data. And they came up with something called RDF, which is a representation format, which is similar to XML. So we have an agreement on how to write it. Since we have an agreement, both we write it in a way so that machine can process that. So that is the, that is the only thing about RDF. And then they developed something called RDF schema. They added a little bit of semantics there, so it can say Sarsa is a person. So they define that is a relationship. Or oh, uh, student is a person, like two re a relationship between two classes, subclass. So they came up with small semantics like that. That is RDF schema. And then, uh, <coughs> then we have OWL, which allows you to define more constraint on the data set that you have, like this can have this many number of in instances, those kind of more expressive information. And OWL comes with the cost of scalability issues. You can write things in an expressive way, but it is hard to process them more recently. So that is the whole idea of semantic web. You can create structured data in a way that uh, it is easier for a machine to process. So then you don't need to process text for the, for the information that you have already captured. So that is the whole idea of semantic web. I'm not going to do much detail about linked data. So DBpedia is a, uh, is a framework which extracts the structured information from Wikipedia. So the idea is since Wikipedia is more up to date, since it, it has a cover rate, so th this will allow us to have a look at a data set with those information. And so why do we need something like this? Probably we can write more uh, interesting query. If you want to build a lexicon for one of your work, let's say I want to extract all the locations in this, in this particular place, two things, you can either go and uh, process a web page which is already there that has the information, or you can just issue a simple query and get the information you need. And then there are other branch of applications which try to use this, uh, the relationship between entities to get them and use them in their own respective applications. And DBpedia is not, not the only data set like that. We have a data set called Freebase, which later been acquired by Google to come up with their Google Knowledge Graph. And then also we have something called Wikidata, which is in the same capacity as DBpedia. So there are these kind of data set and we are discussing one today. So this has started uh, in 2006. And I'm sure all of you have learned about linked open data. So linked open data is a collection of data set which are interlinked to each other. So DBpedia play a very key role. It, uh, it worked as the central point of uh, linked open data because most of the data set try to link. Since DBpedia covers wide variety of topics, they try to interlink their instances to the DBpedia instances. Uh, and uh, then there are other language editions for Dipedia as well. So currently they have more than around 120 languages, including most of the languages I think in the, in the audience. So they have information from multiple languages. So these are a couple of queries that uh, you might be able to run using the Dipedia. Uh, what have Dublin and LaTeX in common? Which software products are developed by an organization founded in California? which populated places in Germany are below sea level. So the idea is you having this kind of information, it is easy for you to write a simple query and get the information. So in the Dbpedia, uh, the main thing in the semantic web, you know, we call it entities. So we have a collection of entities captured in one data set. And how Dbpedia create these uh, entities, they, they are using the pages in Wikipedia. Each page in Wikipedia is an entity in Wikipedia. So this, this is a text snippet from one particular page in Wikipedia. I think they're talking about a starship in one of the Star Trek movies. So the Wikipedia will identify these things as entities and then try to capture those information. 
So the idea is the, the ability to run interesting queries. So this is one of the queries that uh, they came up with and they show if you, if you try to run this kind of a query using a, a search engine like Google, how hard it be. The first, it's hard to write this kind of a query in a way that Google can interpret. So there, there's a couple of uh, expressions that you know we can use and then or in a Google query. So they try to uh, interpret that sentence using those kind of Google qu queries and then show these are the results which are. Yeah. Go back to Yes. Okay, so one page in Wikipedia is one entity in the page. Yes, that's how they create it. Yeah, that's how they create it. So and other how about the other entities? So they then they try to link? Yes. Yes. I'll 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 go to the exact details when when it comes to the data side. So now the idea is you will be able to run this kind of uh, interesting queries using DBpedia. Uh, so the DBpedia has an ontology, so other than information they grab from Wikipedia, they have defined kind of a schema level description about the data that we've captured that is commonly referred to as ontology. So DBpedia have their own thing called DBpedia ontology. So they have captured like, okay, British comedy is a comedy, comedy is a film. So they have used uh, British comedy is a subclass of comedy, comedy is a subclass of film. So they have defined those kind of relationships. And I'm sure you know about the basic fundamentals of RBF. So this is a film and film starring this particular actor. And this is the birth date of that particular actor. And then we will say this URI is a film using type relationship. And then we have the textual information about the film. Uh, so we use the property abstract to that. So this will give a broad idea about what the movie. So those, these are the basic information that any RDF can capture. So um, this is how one of the queries look like. I think we'll go back to the query. Uh, let's try this. So you, all of you have laptops, right? Some of you have laptops. So those who have, haven't, you can share or uh, we can try to see how we can explore this, uh, this whole share. thing. Power is off. So just to start with, uh, I will see how Wikipedia and DBpedia have represented the information. I will go to Wikipedia and I will search Barack Obama. No, I'm going with the flow. <laughs> so this is the information about uh, Barack Obama in the Wikipedia page. If you just want to have the Wikipedia page of this, you just need to type. So it comes with the prefix dbpedia.org slash resource slash and then you can replace the name from the Wikipedia page in the dbpedia page. So this should give you the dbpedia page for Barack Obama. So yes, you can see it started with this abstract information about him and then in the same way that we have RDF triples, we have a property and a value. So this is abstract of him and this is the, we have birth date, birthplace, his party, region, religion, so this kind of information. <coughs> and all this information they have extracted from this particular info box in Wikipedia. So what Wikipedia does is they will have a look at, since this is the structured information in Wikipedia, so they will get this info box and then they will use uh, 
things like vice president, so they'll have a corresponding property uh, for vice president, they'll use that and then they'll uh, create another entity, Joe Biden, which is again in Wikipedia, as you can see, this linking to another page in Wikipedia, so Wikipedia, so Wikipedia will have a corresponding entry to Joe Biden, and then we will have this connection in Wikipedia. So any page which is there in Wikipedia, you can just get the get that page from Wikipedia by using that uh, URL. So um, I assume that you guys have a basic understanding about Sparkle. So let's try to get uh, some information from Wikipedia. Uh, let's say we want to uh, get the information about um, musicians in Bali. So I want to extract the information about musicians in Bali. So how do we start to explore the data set? So where do we start? We only, we, we, we only know that I'm interested about musicians information in Bali. And I know Berlin has a Wikipedia page. And now I want, want to go and check in the schema. Is there anything corresponding to music, music or music artist or musician? So Wikipedia has this view. For, so I'm just giving this, uh, this detail in a way. If you guys have some interesting data to collect from Wikipedia, the process that usually I am going to do. So Wikipedia uh, has this, uh, so for all this information you can download, so you have a large OWL file that you can try to download and load it in Protege. But I try to use this kind of approach because it is more easier than you don't need to load the whole ontology. So this is the view of the Wikipedia ontology. You can browse this uh, using this URL. So now I'm trying to see what are the entities or what is the class that I can use to find the information about musician. So I found this one which has information about which called musical artists. So I assume that this will have the information I need. So now what I will try to do is I'll try to use this one and see whether I can get the information about the musical artist. Can you click the button? Oh, yeah. Let's increase yeah. this one a little bit too. So this is like a simple hierarchical structure of all the classes that they have. So now you go to the Sparkle endpoint, dbpdr.org slash sparkle. And then you run the query. I assume you guys are familiar with the syntax. So now I want to see whether I have musicians information. So I tried to decompose the query. First I think, okay, I want to see whether there are musician information, then I want to refine them into the musician which has switched off from birth. So usually A means the RDF type. So this since this is coming from ontology, I'm using this uh, this prefix. So looks like we have some information about music artist. So what did you give the prefix for the, the ontology? Yeah, so this one, uh, these are standard prefix prefixes that, uh, so for an example, for each Wikipedia resource, <coughs> you, they are using http wikipedia.org slash resource. If it is a class, then they have wikipedia.org slash ontology. And if it is a property, then they'll have the property with the same property. And when you open your tab, it was there. So 
No, actually, oh, she, this is a map. Added, I think. Right. This is a map. No, no, no. This I added. Yeah. You mean the first these couple of lines, and so the I added them yeah. in advance. Usually, it's blank. Uh, yeah. With the, so you can use these prefixes, so you can just simply put the complete URL without any prefixes. So that means if I just replace this. Even then, I should get the same result. So you, we are just using prefixes to improve the readability of the query. So now I, I have a way to extract all the musicians' information. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Let's say um, I have doubt whether um, that's the correct prefix or not. Is there any way I can see the list of prefix and I just to get help to call it here? Yeah. So usually, what I do is. Uh, in the let me. I think there is a prefix of CC. That we can see. All yeah, the we can use that. Usually, what I would do is I would start with an entity I know, and then explore the okay. what are the results that are out there, and then use them because then I know for sure they are right. Because sometimes when they change the version, things can change because of that. Okay, so now I want to filter the musician to those who live in Bali. So for that now I need to know how do I find the relevant property which have the information about birthplace. So the way I do it, I go to... So, 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 yep. so for generating the prefix, so how do you understand whether it's going to be in resource or it's going to be in ontology or... So with yeah, that so prefix that CC, you can get that information? So usually they have a standard way of doing that. For every entity, which is which are the pages in Wikipedia, they have used this prefix, wikipedia.org slash resource. It is fixed. If it is a property, they have this one. So this one plus whatever the property name you have. So these are fixed. Mm -hmm. Whichever the DBpedia version you have, they try to stick to these standards. Mm -hmm. So the, these are always the same. But there might be some other properties. For an example, the property is coming from Perl ontology. So in that case, you have to get that correct URI. Usually I do is I start with an entity I know, then have a look at the set of properties that they have used, and then use those properties accordingly. Can you show me this? Yeah, so for an example, Let me pick one musician from here. Let me go to a new page. So these are all the properties and uh, that's right. So you know this is RDF type, it has birthplace, birth date. So this is how usually I get an understanding of what are the properties that they have. But in addition to that, for all the classes, once you open this hierarchy, right, let's say mu music artist. If I have, if I click that, then they will show you all the allowable properties. So then you just need to replace that prefix, this with the prefix, not replace, merge the prefix with this. So this will give you all the properties that are unique to, to a given particular type. But in here, so now uh, if you go back to our query, what we wanted was all the musician uh, had from Bali, which is the birthplace of Bali. Now I'm looking at uh, these properties and I, I cannot find uh, anything which is corresponding to the birthplace or uh, anything about their location. So then what we should uh, do is, so music artist, we know it is a type, it is a, he's an artist and he's a person. 
since a property like birthplace is generic to person, so I assume that okay, probably this might be there in the person. And then as you can see, they have birthplace here. So I use this property to uh, restrict my query. I will go back to the query and I will say, musician, I'm using the prefix for the properties. And then I will say, Place. Now I want to find the corresponding DBPDI entity for Berlin. It's source Berlin, right? What? It's a resource. Yeah, it is a resource. So since it is a one word, usually they use the same thing, but let's just check so you guys can repeat that later on. I go to DBPedia. I search for Berlin. Is uh, one word. I get that, and then I use the resource prefix. So this should give me all the uh, art, musical artists, artists from Bali. So this is how you usually. Like to get, have a sense of what the whether this has the information you need, this is something that uh, you can do. So I saw some other queries that use filter. Not yeah, so uh, you can go to more complex queries. For an example, this one. So I think uh, the query for this one was. Which film start? John Casey, so he's an actor, and he, he was associated with one uh, British comedy group, and this, they, this, these people, they want to find movies he started in, but doesn't have any of the members from that com comedy group. So it is a little bit of a complex query, so that's why they have uh, used filter here. So filter is to say, okay, you get this data and then remove this data. I don't want this part, I only want this part. So that's why they have used filter not exist. Otherwise you can say filter exist or something like that. So these are Sparkle, uh, constructing the Sparkle query anyway. But you can substitute a filter with the same as what you did by statements, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. But sometimes it is, uh, there might be scenarios where it is not possible, you really need to have a filter kind of a thing to filter. Because in this part, right, you you need to go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia and extract the community members of that particular group and then say, I want uh, his movies but not the movies of this couple of people. So that, that's why you want it. So these are more complex queries. You can try these out. If you are interested, come to me and I'll give you more queries to uh, familiarize with the process. So this is to give an idea what are the information being captured in uh, Dubipedia. So they've used um, the, you can see the first paragraph of Dubipedia, right? So usually they have the first paragraph of Dubipedia because I've seen even most of the NLP tags try to use first paragraph, not the entire Wikipedia page because it's not possible. So they have, they have the information about the abstract in a textual format and then, uh, uh, I think I'll go to each of these things later, but they have uh, the facts, which is there in the info box uh, thing. And in addition to that, they'll have, let me go through all the information that they try to capture. So let's say in this page, they will capture everything in, in this box. In addition to that, as you can see, this page has linked to other page, other, other, other entities. So they have uh, th those information as well. It is in a separate file called Wikilinks. So it has all the information about the linking of one entity to all the other entities. So it is another information. And then the other main thing is the bottom of every Wikipedia page, you have something called categories, which categorize this Wikipedia page into different categories. For an example, 
this one they have categorized is to German state capital. So if you want to find what are the other German state capitals, you can, if you click there, probably you'll have the relevant information. So they have used, uh, they have captured this information and also put it into a Wikipedia. If you want to use this for your research purpose, I know it's hard to rely on a Sparkle endpoint like this and get the information. So in that case, they have made available the files to you. So you guys can go to the files and extract the relevant information. I'll go to the files in, in, in a little bit. So, Sarah, same question. So did you use this in your thesis? Yes. So can you also show me that note? Uh, I'm using this machine, but uh, so me and Halper set up uh, uh, one local version in Noises, so we, we can use it. But even that, the performance was not that great. So, so what version of what? The, for, for the DBPedia, so we I have a local know. version. Because sometimes this goes down, the runtime performance of each query might be very low because everyone is trying to access it. So we had a one version in here. But in addition to that, I have uh, I've loaded the uh, couple of parts in DBpedia in Neo4j graph database because I'm only relying on the RDF information like this related to this. Those are the only information I'm using in my work. So I have loaded into a Neo4j graph database and that also is available if anyone wants to use it. That way it is pretty fast rather than relying on to a... But if you just want to pre-process some information, let's say you want to build a lexicon, like you, you want to use the location information, you can simply scan the files and extract the relevant information to you and then you can do whatever you want. So that is the good thing about them since they have exposed everything to the community so they can use it in the way that they would. I'll show the, those links as well in a bit. So these are the main information that they cover. So this we have already discussed. Uh, link structure of the Wikipedia and Wikipedia. You just need to replace the uh, prefix for each resource. So this is giving uh, just a couple of statistics. It had around uh, more than 5 million entities now, and now it has more than 1 billion of prefix just in the English version of Wikipedia. And uh, so like I said earlier, they have the Wikipedia categories and then it linked to other data sets such as Yago. So Yago is a, another data set which used the DBpedia information and also the WordNet information. So they try to combine it. I think these things are very useful when you work with the NLP, NLP tasks because the reason um, I think we are talking about DBpedia today because I see that is a major intersection about from the semantic web and the NLP community because they provide this resource to you so that they can use in their NLP uh, so, so, just one question. So, I looked at Yago, but I did not really see, uh, you know, from an expert point of view, I did not see anything that I can distinguish because I didn't have that background. Hmm. You mean the, in the Yago data set? Yeah, Yago from Wikipedia. Yeah, so let's see whether we can have a look at it. I know the talk is about the Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so where the Wikipedia have the Yago information is the type information. So Yago is a schema, like a type hierarchy kind of a thing. So for each DBpedia entity, they have these Yago classes that they have linked to. So it has, uh, uh, this is for Barack Obama, he's uh, African American United States Senator, American political writer, so all the types that could possibly associated with uh, Barack Obama, they've linked it to the Yago type. So Yago is, uh, it has more of a type information, which is so they have used the Wikipedia category structure, but they've said they have more fine grade information. Because Wikipedia category structure is very rich, but it is too messy for anyone to read it. That is my understanding. Because it will say, okay, this is an aquarium, and this is a building, and then it will go further up with all the information that as a building. But let's say a point of uh, interest application, right? They don't care whether this is a building. They care 
this as the from the point of view that this is a place that people can come and visit to see the fish. So there are like different aspects that they have captured and uh, also it's, it's really messy. It's big, it is messy. So Yago said that they have tried to drill it down to more uh, meaningful categories. So what but, are these numbers? Yeah, so they, these are their identifiers. Are there some identifiers that they have came up with. Let's see whether this points to anything. I'm not sure. So this is about politician. Yeah, so this is uh, from the Yago information, what uh, we have in the DBPDA is the, for every entity, every page will be linked to Yago categories. And then you can get the super categories of that. So for an example, this is the politicians. You'll have uh, the subclass of uh, politicians. So those kind of information you can get from DBPedia. But if you really want to play around with Yago, then it's a different data set that you have to download oh, and play around with it. But there are some information from Yago to get. OK. And uh, And with uh, each of these triples, they have uh, information about provenance material. That means where are the where it came from, basically the Wikipedia link to the Wikipedia page. So if you want to download this and play around with, let's go and see where you have the information. So again, what is what is the provenance metadata mean? Uh, it, so basically with, with, when it is originated. No, me, no. For for the Wikipedia perspective, the only thing they have captured it this triple is extracted from this particular Wikipedia page. Mm -hmm. So the provenance information is the link to the Wikipedia okay. page. Okay, so this is the Wikipedia download website. And this is their latest version, which they have, I think, uh, released last year, December. So you have uh, information categorized into different different categories so first they will give you the ontology that if you want to download and so it will help you to scan the whole thing and then uh, they have this all the language in let me Sarsi, can you tell us yes. the url what is it say the url yes yeah let me increase the so the wikipedia.org yeah just search wikipedia download. download and then download. yeah so this is the link to wiki.dbpedia.org slash download. Okay. You just type mm -hmm. download, dbpedia download, you will get to this site. Yeah, so first uh, you can get the ontology. And then since they have information of number of uh, different languages, you can filter the language. You can say, okay, I only want English information, or I only want France, uh, like that. And then, so they have like a lot of these different information captured. I will go through most of the important ones. So article categories. This being for each article that you have, it give it will give you all the Wikipedia categories, which is at the bottom of the, the bottom. page. Yeah. So for each of these uh, information. So they will allow you to see a preview of the data set if you just click this. So this is article categories. So this will, by looking at this snippet, you can have an idea what the page is talking about. So this is talking about each entity and their categories. So for the categories, to create the connection between the page and the category, they are using uh, this particular relationship, DC term subject, and then this is the category. So with every file, you can have a look at this preview of the data set, so you know you are downloading the right file. So this is article categories, and then the labels of the categories, because most of the time, label is the one which is important for most of the NLP tasks, so they give labels for each of the categories. 
What do you mean later? Uh, human read, not the URL, the human readable label. Let's, let's have a look at one. So like this. Hmm. We'll go to And so this is the triple format and this is the provenance information that I talked about. So this this link will point to the exact uh, Wikipedia page and the section that uh, it came. So you have category information. So the, each of these things will give a description like this. So it is readable for anyone. So this is free base link, how we connect with the uh, links in freebase using the outside mass relationship and then these are geo coordinates that they've extracted from Wikipedia and then you have so when it talks about the triple like subject predicate object they have two types of information one is an unfiltered one second is a filtered one why they had to do it so how the, the, the their conversion process what they do is they go to that raw info box when people write the information in that raw info box, they, they have templates. So this is the standard practice of the Wikipedia community. So they have template by saying, okay, if it is person, these are the information that we would like to capture in the info box. So they, they've only captured that. So the original file, they don't care about any of those templates, uh, information about those templates. They just extract the subject, template thing as the property and the object. So that's it. But that has a lot of duplicate. For an example, they have birth date in one template and date of birth in another template. So those two will have two triples. The unfiltered one is they try to um, formalize or the try to normalize those things into a one like birth date, date of birth. They'll try to assign one you one property for that, and then like they do some kind of a cleaning. So usually, if you are using uh, DBpedia, I would suggest not to use this info info box properties but rather go to that is one called this mapping based uh, objects and map, mapping base mapping base objects and mapping base literal so these two are the filtered files this information will be there for you to read but uh, i'm just telling you in advance so if you use this it is a more refined version of those raw info box properties which is appropriate so you have uh, those information and then even the read, uh, direct, uh, like uh, they have some redirection right in every Wikipedia page. So they, those information are also there. Yeah, I think those are the main. Or oh, the other one is this course categories, which has the uh, category information. So in in this one, what they have is so in the previous one we talked about, it has the article and the category information. And if you go to uh, Wikipedia. So I said these are the categories which is which are there, right? Mm -hmm. And if you click each category, Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia organized subcategories for each of those categories, and also super category of that can be obtained here in the same way that page have captured that. So those informations are also there if you want to use. It had uh, I think it is in the this course category uh, category. So you will have that super class of class relationship also to take. Yeah, so, so this is the place where you can download and also it has links to other data set in the link to open data community. Those things are not that important. So, so that's how you need to, you if you want to download and uh, I think if we are, most, for most of our work what I have found is it is always easier to download the data set and extract whatever the relevant parts for us. Then you don't need to rely on any of their services to... So uh, you download the DBpedia? Yeah, so I, I have the subject, property, object, all the triples with that and also the category, category hierarchy. Those three information are there. But I think the DBpedia instance that we have downloaded, it has everything but it is little old. Like I think we did it 2013 or 2014, so it is not up to date. So the how, one that we have... How big it was, the DBpedia thing? 
they claim to have uh, more coverage than Wikipedia, but the problem is they have a little bit of complex structure in capturing the data. So it is not simply subject, predicate, object. Since they want to ca uh, capture provenance information, they have internally used a little bit of a complex structure. Probably some of you know the similar thing like Wings approach, they try to use something like that to capture the provenance information. So they have a good bit of information, but for a novel user who doesn't uh, much aware about the semantic web, all these things, it's a little bit hard for them to use Wikidata. But good thing about Wikipedia is I think anyone who wants to who wants it, this information, it is it is not such a hectic task to explore this data set. Yeah, so I think those are the all information that I wanted to cover. I will share these links. I think they have uh, all the information and some of the publications also would use them. Any questions? Okay, so. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, do you think, do you, did you ever use uh, Yago for anything? No, I other than the types here. Yeah. Never forget. Okay. But, but what do you want to uh, like? What kind of information do you think that you can get from there? No, I mean, when they talk about linked uh, linked open data, they talk about the Wikipedia Yago, second. Yeah. Name that they mentioned. So Yago. And I was not able at all to use it. Anyway, I mean, so the uh, popularity of Yahoo uh, really increased when Watson came because uh, Watson uh, said Yago. the only yeah, usage yeah. of Watson in this linked data okay. semantic web, the best, the only place where so they get five candidate answers oh, use right. instead of the yeah. techniques, and then now they want to drill drill down the final answer. Even that, they've used a couple of techniques, not <coughs> the semantic web. So they try to look at the type information. And then they rank each of these candidate entities based on that. So they've said by using Yago hierarchy, they were able to increase uh, their performance by 10%. Oh. So that is where the Yago, it was already there and people are using it in a research perspective. But after Watson made that claim, that's where uh, the more attention went to the Yago. So, so I, I have to assume that they have a very good structure, like their structure is very refined in comparison to the, because if you look at the Wikipedia ontology, it is very shallow. Like in some of the cases you have actor, but uh, the particular actor is not being typed into the actor type. Even though you have the actor type in the Wikipedia ontology, let's say Brad Pitt, it's not typed to the Wikipedia, uh, like the, the type class in the Wikipedia ontology. But if you look at the Yago, Yago have a really fine grain like, okay, this is an uh, actor, this is an uh, American actor, so they have very fine grained information. So that's why I think because for Watson, that's something that they want and like what is the type of it to finally deal with Yago. So that's why probably I would assume Yago worked for them. So that, that that's why so I assume that they have a good bit of like rich type people. So I remember when we talked about the uh, alchemy taxonomy, you know? mm -hmm. like they have the categories. Do you have it like? Do you find similar stuff there in Yago? I think it is better than alchemy structure. Okay. That's at least from what I know. That is, but I checked Yago like two or three years back. So I don't know now. Okay. I think with respect to the type information, yeah, it is better. That's my So how? So how did you use? So, I didn't. Uh, I took two use cases which have movie recommendation using Wikipedia. So, movie recommendation usually have two parts. One is the content base. Let me, if I like this movie actor, there is a chance that I might like uh, the other, another film by the same actor. So that is the content base part. And then there is a collaborative base part, which means. Okay, yeah, uh, there is me and then there is this person, both of us have watched the same set of movies, so then there is a high chance that I would like the same movie that he is being referred to. So for the content-based part, they have focused on data sets such as DBpedia and LinkedMovieDB. So what I did was I used uh, the movie information in DBpedia and have a recommendation system. 
But the problem was since it had all into the Wikipedia has all the information about everything, right? Not only about movie. So I was trying to reduce the graph into the movie information. So in terms of the scalability and also the accuracy, uh, the performance of the system should be improved. Since I only have the movie specific information, the accuracy will be improved. Since uh, the graph size is smaller now, because of that, the performance overhead is also decreased. So that's why I have uh, my work. So you use it for filtering? Yeah, the domain data. specific parts of Wikipedia. So it, if, if you give me a type, I can give you the Wikipedia portion which is relevant to that type. Okay. Anything else? Then I'm back unless Dr. Shek wants to add anything. So, what was the Yes. Work? <laughs> so, I, well, she, she was work. She was. Yeah, she, he worked on the categories, right? Yes. So, what did exactly, I mean... So, I think uh, both... Um, he yeah. wanted it to be more of Yago, like more fine-grained and so... No, I don't think he used Yago. So, the connection between uh, his work and Yago is because Yago is also built on the Wikipedia category hierarchy. So, that is the connection. What he was trying to do is, um, so Wikipedia category hierarchy is really messy. So he wanted to get uh, what are the more relevant categories for a given entity, what are the more relevant categories. Uh, regardless of the, uh, the mentioned in the paper. Yes, yes. Also. So Pawan's work, what he was trying to do is, as far as I remember, so you have, uh, uh, you have uh, in your Twitter profile, it identifies the important entities that you're talking about. And then it tries to traverse the Wikipedia category hierarchy to identify what are the general interests. So probably you might be talking about baseball, basketball. Uh, so that will tell you that he's interested in sport. So if there is another information about a different sport, let's say cricket, it will try to suggest that. So he tries to create a user profile based on Wikipedia categories and then use it for recommendation. So how Kalpa use this? Kalpa tries to summarize the information. So, um, with clustering and everything. Yes, so because let's say a politician, you'll have personal information, then you will have uh, his work as an author, his work as the president, or maybe his work as the senate. Mm -hmm. So, those kind of different information. So, he tried to cluster the properties so they have meaningful different groups which represent diverse aspects. And then he tries to summarize using only those properties. So he used the categories here? No, he used the um, triples, like subject oh. predicate of subject, those triples. So for each DBpedia entity, mm. uh, he'll be able to summarize, or this is a summarized description uh, for this one. His work is useful when there are cases that you have a lot of properties that you, it is hard for you to get a, like an overview kind of a detail about that particular entity. Because if you just look at one page, maybe for the type, they'll have like thousands of type for a one, one person. All of them might not be useful if you just want to have a glance of a particular entity. So that, that's where it's That's for the summary of the Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Wikipedia spotlight, Pablo. I know. Yeah. Also in-house. <laughs>